Hi everyone, in today's video I am going to cover how to use uh, one of Smartsheet's common add-ons called Dynamic View. <clears throat> Dynamic View is additional, an additional tool that allows you to create, um, it's almost like a, another version of a report in Smartsheet. However, it has a couple of differentiators between Smartsheet reports and the Dynamic View. So the, one, the two of the most important ones, the use cases that we see are with Dynamic View, you are able to edit a um, sheet or report without access to the actual sheet. So a really common use case of this is potentially you have resources that are outside of your organization that are supporting you on a project. You want them to be able to update the tasks that are assigned to them, but you don't want them to have access to the sheet of data. Um, as many of you may know, with the reports in Smartsheet, um, you're not able to edit the content in the report unless you have access to the sheet. So although you could create a dashboard and create reports at a current user view, they're not going to be able to click on those and actually make changes to them unless they have access to the underlying sheet. With Dynamic View, they don't have to have access to the sheet and they'll be able to edit the items that are assigned to them. Another really big value add in comparison to Smartsheet reports is that you can actually add new rows through Dynamic View, almost in a form like user experience, um, whereas in a report in Smartsheet, you're not able to do that. <clears throat> so you can see here on the screen, I have just an example of a report that's pulling from a project plan for um, projects or for items that are due in the next two weeks. So my filters are just that the status is not completed or canceled. The finished date is in the next 10 business days. <clears throat> I also have an additional filter here to not pull parent rows um, into the report as well. So I'm going to go into dynamic view. And it's over here in your app launcher. So I'm going to click dynamic view or you can go to dynamicview.smartsheet.com if it's not showing there. <clears throat> This is going to show all views that I have here, views that are shared with me that others created and so on. So I'm going to click this blue button in the top right hand corner. And I'm going to search for the report um, that I want to link to this dynamic view. I have a lot of view of the next two weeks reports. Here we go. So I'm going to select that report and click create. Awesome. So there's four different kind of um, tabs when you're creating your dynamic view. So this is what you want the view name to be. Um, you can add in some description if you want. There's a little info button um, when you look at the view if someone wants to click on that. So I'll just type in here into description here as an example so I can show you what that looks like. And it confirms the source sheet or reports. You can pull it from a sheet or a report. Um, I would say the difference would be is obviously with a report, you can set specific filters. So I specifically want this view to be items that are due in the next two weeks. If I just wanted it to show all items in the project plan um, at a current user view, I could just pull directly from the sheet. Um, although you can set the cur a current user filter at the report level, you don't need to when you're linking it to a dynamic view. You can do that at the dynamic view level. So you have to have the column in the report. Um, or the sheet that you want to um, look to for the current user view. So I'm going to click the assign to. Um, new item submission, you cannot allow this or you can allow it. I will allow it just so that um, just that I can show you that functionality. I will just call out that if you have a report that's linking to multiple sheets, you can only add new items to one specific sheet. So this is helpful when it's one specific sheet, when it's many sheets and you're pulling them into a report, it might not make sense to add new items unless you have one master sheet that you want them added to. Um, and then it does say, you know, if you want to allow folks to export the data or not. Um, so that's just a personal decision on that one. So I'm going to click save and then I'm going to go to my next tab. <clears throat> On the view display, so the view display is actually what it's going to look like before you click into an item. So that think of it again, similar to a report, you're selecting what columns do you want to show in your report. So if you were going to put this on the dashboard, what are the main things that you want to see, right? So I want the task name, I want assigned to, I want start and finish, status, percentage complete, 
task health, task type, but task type at the top. Um, I think I want all these columns actually. And then you can allow users um, to see attachments and attachments as well as comments separately. I typically like to check these off because it can be very useful. And then I'm going to save. So the details panel is actually what shows once they click on an item. So if again, if we're comparing this to a Smartsheet report, when you click on a Smartsheet report, it opens you in the report and it shows you in an Excel view. In dynamic view, it's actually going to show as a little flyout and then show the data vertically, similar to a form experience. So I'll show you what that looks like when we get through this. This details panel is what do you want to show when they click on it to be able to edit? So in this example, I do have all the fields that I want, and I want them to show both in the view display and the details panel. However, in some cases, if there's a lot more fields, I likely in the view display may only pick five or six to show. And then in the details panel where I want them to edit it, I'm going to show 10, 15, you know, depending on the content. So same experience as before. We're just kind of adding them over here. I can just click the plus sign. You can also drag and drop them to where you want them to be. I can click add to all of them and then just move them around. When you click on each one, it has settings. You can set specific fields to read only. You can set specific fields to require, especially if um, you're going to be allowing users to add new items. That's where this information is really important. Um, you know, you can require assign to, require status, and so on. You can also add, update the field name, just like in a Smartsheet form. You can add some description help text. If it's a text field, you can also show it as multiple lines. Um, if, you know, the content in there potentially would span across that. Um, and you can also hide specific fields in as well. You can put an initial value, which is similar to default value if you're familiar with building a, a form in, in Smartsheet. Another um, piece is it does also have conditional formatting. So again, very similar to a form. If um, in these fields, I don't have a good use case, but if you said, you know, if they select this item, then show these fields, right? So you can say, you know, if the status is one of not started, then I think it's not allowing me because I don't have a field here, but then you would be able to say, you know, show this field, essentially. You can say if it's not one of, and you can add as many of those as you'd like. So again, it's very similar to a form functionality. You can set that conditional logic. Perfect. The last tab, we have invalid changes. Do you want to continue and go to a new tab? Oh. Looks like because I opened the conditional formatting, it wasn't letting me finish. So I'll just click through that and save that again. And then I'm going to go to sharing. So you can select admins. So admins would be able to edit this view. So if you have another person that you're working with that you want to be able to make changes, you would add them as admins. And then you would share specific users or groups of users. So um, the, I would strongly recommend that if you haven't done so that you set up groups in your admin center to make sharing users easier. Oh, and here's actually groups that come up. Um, for you. You can also do domains. If you have a large organization, you can allow specific domains um, to access the view. And those are really all the settings. When I click back to the view, it's going to show me the dynamic view itself. And this is the URL to the view. So if I were to add this to a dashboard, it's going to be um, web content widget. And I can show you what that looks like in just a second as well. Okay, so you can see here, it looks just like a report. You can select to wrap text down in the view. You can drag and drop, you know, the different space that it shows for each item. This is the little info where you can view the description of the dynamic view. When you click on an item, this is the little flyout I was referring to. So it's gonna show all the information and it's gonna allow the person to make changes and update. You can see, I think on, one of these I did view only originally, right? And then over on attachments, oops, so I need to hit save. And then you can add, you can look at attachments and add attachments since I allowed that functionality and you can add comments and look at comments here as well. When you click new item, it's gonna show the same exact um, view. It's just gonna be completely blank unless you entered in any of those initial values. 
um, again, similar to default value in a Smartsheet form. Perfect. So if I go to, I have a project dashboard. And if I wanted this dynamic view to show on the dashboard, I am going to, oops, this one, I'm going to copy this URL. So I'm doing control C. And then over here, I'm going to click this pencil and I'm going to add a widget. And I'm going to say web content, add content. You just paste the URL and apply. And then you can expand it out. So it looks a little bit different than a report. You can enter a title or since it already has a title here, I usually hide the titles on dynamic views. You can save and it's going to function exactly the same way as we just looked at. So you click here, it shows a flyout. And then click here, it's going to allow you to add a new item. Additionally, you can also just provide this URL. Again, if we're using the example of outside contractors, potentially they don't have a dashboard view, you can just share this link and they can bookmark it and they can update the items that are assigned to them that way as well. Thank you for watching this video. Um, in our description, you'll see a link to our YouTube channel and other Smartsheet helpful tips. Thank you.